So, we were bringing three blade components to see loose. Alright, we'll go deliver these blade components. And he'll reassemble the blade and summon a demon. Hopefully not that part, but if he does, then we'll murder the demon. It's not really murder if it's a demon, though. Yeah, we'll kill Seelus, though. That'll be murder. No, that'll be justice. What? <sighs> nope. Nope. No, no raccoons. Nope. I thought you nope. liked raccoons. Nope. Oh, okay. I got those things for you. What is it? Do you have one of the razor fragments? I have all of the razor fragments. You're efficient. I like that. Here's your reward. Finally, all the pieces of Merun's razor are in my hands. It's time I let you in on something. You stab me? There's a fourth piece. Oh. That scabbard in the display case, built to house the razor. And there's more. Mm. I know how to put all the pieces together. We just need to take them to Dagon's shrine and contact the Lord of Change directly. Is a scabbard really a piece of a dagger? It's just I mean, it's dagger housing. It's a crucial component to it. Is but it? I think the dagger like... works just fine without the carrying case. Yeah, but you know you can't really carry it around without having it in a carrying case. You can put it in your belt. I a bit of an unsafe way to carry it, but you could do it. Yeah, because it's probably gonna like cut through your belt though. Wouldn't yeah. any scabbard do though? Does it have to be his scabbard? I feel like for magical powers, it needs to be this specific one. Well, we don't want the magical powers. This belongs to an evil dude. Yeah, and uh, on the topic of that, this sounds like a really, really bad idea. You don't want to be a part of history? Fine. I'll be at the shrine if you change your mind. All right, let's go watch this guy get killed. We'll take, uh, we'll take the old uh, Skyrim Airlines and fly there. You ready? Or we could hire a boat. I mean, Mike, the, where we're going to is landlocked, so unless the, <laughs> unless the boat's just going... <laughs> cut to the land. <laughs> I admit, it's magical land. Maybe these boats can do that. They got like 600 horses pulling the boat. <laughs> yeah, this here is a 600 horsepower, Evan Rude. Ah, you can see the deployable wheels sticking on the sides. It's got 18 wheels right there. Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 wheels on a big boat. And now in Roman numerals. Oh, there's I, 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 V, 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 I, V, I, I, V, I, 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 X, 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 I, X, I, I, X, I, I, X, I, V, X, V, X, V, I, X, V, I, X, V, I, 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 wheels on a big rig. And they're rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling down the road. The, 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 the. I'm very impressed that you could actually do that many Roman numerals. I get lost after five. I really liked that song. Oh, you know, that, that makes sense. Um, we're just going to fast travel to... Uh... You mean boat travel on the land? I think it might be faster to go from Labyrinthian. So... Oh, no, because there's no road that connects Labyrinthian to... Oh, wait. So it goes down there. Well, here's what I'm wondering, though. Like, is because this is a cave entrance or a mine? Hmm. I, I, you know what? We'll, we'll follow your lead on this. We'll go to Labyrinthian. All right, thanks for the boat ride. Thank you, boat. Thank you. And back to the town you came from. I think the really the really bad journalism piece that I had read was like, they showed them a bunch of different colors <laughs> and they asked them which color was different and none of them pointed at the blue color because they couldn't see it. And it's just like, shut up. There, a giant ugly lizard. It's definitely not a blue dragon. Uh, it's not burgundy either. Oh, oh, why am I shooting ice at it? <laughs> I would I would probably describe that as more of like an ice blue. Uh, I don't know what the official name for it would be, but yeah, like an ice blue. Dead ice dragon blue. No, you get back here. You get back here. You <laughs> <laughs> it in, hit me. Go in for a crash landing. Spoiler. <laughs> it ran into me. It flew into you. You are a very interesting individual hey what the hell is that tail what is that someone's ripping off alien thought you could i hate it so much i hate it so much when that happens it makes my head hurt do i hear a word wall oh hey what it died right in front of a word wall. convenient convenient let's see what we're gonna invest the soul into oh, <laughs> perfect it was meant to be that's why that's why that's why he was here it was a sign from the gods yeah, I feel like this kind of just dead-ended. Wasn't a wasted trip. We got some stuff out of it. But, yeah, uh, we've got to go around the mountain now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use the illegal levitation magic. 
Uh, it, oh, there he is. Where are those steps? Yeah, we were supposed to go all the way around the mountain. All right, all right, hang on. I'll be there in just a second. This has got to be cinematic. The timer's running out on my levitation meter. Oh, God. I should have put more septums in it. Oh, God. I feel like this guy is probably going to do something real stupid. Good. You're here. I'll place the pieces on the altar, and Dagon should speak to us. I don't think you want Dagon to speak to you. Let's hear what he's got to say. This, this is going to be a good idea. Let's hear him out. Maybe he's going to apologize. Merun's Dagon, the Lord of Change. We have brought your razor to you. We beg you, please, bring the blade's full glory to Tamriel again. It's not working. Why don't you give it a try? Um, Just put your hands on the altar. I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to be an accomplice to this. This seems like a real bad idea. Also, that's not actually part of his knife. That's just a ball for a mouse. Let me just pop this into my mouth really quick. It's a very old jawbreaker. Oh. Oh, it's black licorice flavor. <laughs> you. Ah. Mortal. Nope. You are worthy of speaking to. You have claimed the pieces of my razor. It has been an amusing game to witness. But Dagon does not declare a winner while there is a pawn on the board. Kill Silas. He and his family have served their purpose. Uh... Um... <laughs> Why do all of these danger want us to kill their servants? It seems really weird. It seems really weird and dumb. I don't know. I... Uh... But he worships you and the ground you walked on. He yeah. deserves to live. Only Dagon can declare if a pawn is worth keeping. Ugh. I have spoken. Stop man spreading. Kill him. Take your rightful place as my champion, or I will crush you. Hmm. All right. Wait, wait. Don't kill me. There's another way. Oh, you heard that? I can take the pieces back to my museum, seal them in a display case. You get a generous amount of gold, I get to complete my collection, and nobody has to die. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Get out of here, you little scamp. Thank you. Here's your gold. I'll make a run for it back to Dawnstar. You think to betray Mayrun's Dagon? Suffer! See, I knew it was gonna happen! Protect him! Protect the museum curator! He doesn't deserve this! Is he giving you the middle finger? <laughs> Damn you! Oh, wait. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you came out of that better than I did, my friend. I didn't expect him to go full WWE and just, <laughs> just slam him into the ground. Was he dead? Off the <laughs> fucking... Yeah, he's dead, man! He broke his goddamn neck! <laughs> what is the fork of horoplation? Horopilation. Is that a weapon? That's a weapon! It's a tunic fork! It's a horrible fork! Haha! Oh. Well, that's not how I use a fork. I, man, I feel kind of bad that, that we couldn't save him. Oh, hey, key to Mayrune Shrine. And then we'll go inside. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. All right, let's see if we can save him. Good. No, I'm not You're ready. Here. I'm not, oh, wait, no, I'll that's place fine. the yeah, pieces on the altar, uh, and Dagon should speak to us. <laughs> Look, dragons can fly twice. Suffer. Ow! There's the dad! Stop Pharaoh talking speech thing! <laughs> See, when you don't catch us off guard, we can defend ourselves huh? proper! Did you leave? Scorch them, flame goddess! Turn them to ash! There we go. Alright, alright. Let us move on. Okay, hopefully Steelus can make it all the way back without dying. I'm sure he'll be just fine. Not sure where that confidence comes from. We'll, go, we'll have to remember to go check on him after uh, after we explore the shrine. So, what have we here? Madagon. <laughs> this is looking pretty cool. Nice little ice tunnel. Oh, oh shit. Death. So, what are you guys doing? First summon? Oh, that one's already dead. Good work, Flame Atronach. Hmm. Good work continuing to burn him. No! 
and also Zap. Oh shit! And we looted everything that was in the area. Oh, Damn, yeah. there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, I already have the one for Fireball Refined Moonstone. Oh, so many ores. I'm gonna have to drop these back up at base soon. Yeah. So this is this is what we do. We just show up, we find a Daedra, tell the Daedra to get bent, and then we uh, take all the Daedra stuff and then leave. What's he gonna do? Kill us? He can't. He's got no body. Exactly. He's incorporeal. In incorporeal. In. Whatever. Ah, home sweet home. Dropping stuff off. I'm gonna, you know what? We're gonna put the gold bars inside as opposed to outside where just anyone can access them. Oh, fair enough. Drop three. God, <laughs> those have got some fucking impact to them. Got some heft, all right. I mean, that's accurate. The gold bars are freaking heavy. Ah, oh, whoa, free gold. No, it's not free. Get off. Fuck off, skeleton. This is... Why do I have skulls in my house? <laughs> Why are there human skulls in my house? They're useful for crafting. I didn't put those there. Everyone, make sure you put your gold in your, in your specific cubby. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Hey, look at that. Look at that. All right. And now the next one. My foot! <laughs> Just like you just hear the sound of bones breaking. <laughs> As it turns out, golden bricks also land directly on a cat's feet. <laughs> I want to put one. I want to put one on one of these cross beams. You're gonna booby trap your own <laughs> <laughs> With gold. Oh! It worked! It's actually up there! It's up there now, all right. Oh, that is precarious. I'm leaving that right there. That is going to fall on my head in like 20 episodes, and it's going to be the funniest thing. I'm going to get like the, my sixth concussion. <laughs> well, I just broke that bird skull. Doing a little housekeeping? I'm going to make one of them soups like the rich people have. Like those influencers I see on Skyrim Gram. Yes, melt the golden bar, and then put it on your head. Dump the bucket out. A crown fit for a king. That's a Game of Thrones reference. Ow. <laughs> now the only person whose metatarsal needs to be dropped on is mine. And that- Ow! <laughs> God damn it! And now the raccoon. Everyone gets one. Raccoon, I need to put your bowl out. <laughs> The salmon in the bowl. <laughs> he can have a little bit of cheese as a treat. There we go. There's his delicious food bowl. Look how happy he is now. He's eating better than us. Uh, three, four, five, seven, eight. Oh, well, now I don't know which ones I have, though. Oh, look so how nicely organized they are. <laughs> I, it's weird that they went like, and like, crunched together. Three, four, five, seven, eight. You found a playbook in your house. I thought you said you hated those. Do you know what might be kind of fun, Mike? What's that? If we were to reenact this play. By no. Boloth Cole? The Legend of the Cradley House by Boloth Cole. Molag Vol's black sheep of a cousin. Dramatis Personae. Theophan, an Imperial Man, 24 Thief. Near him, a Bosmo Man, 20 Thief. Selenius Cradley, Imperial Man, 51 Merchant. Domina Cradley, his wife, 40. Alvi Al Alvi Alvia Crately, their daughter, 16. Ministers Crately, their son, 11. So we've got two thieves and a family of four. Yeah, why don't you be near him? The Bosmer man, well, that will respect my heritage, thank you. I thought you were no a Nord. Yeah, but I have Bosmer ancestry. Oh, well then you're not a true Nord then. The setting is the famous haunted Crately house in Shandinal. First and second floors requiring a stage with a second story where most of the action takes place. The stage is dark. Poor lighting. There is a creaking noise. Footsteps on the stairs. The sound of a man breathing, but still we see nothing. Then a voice calls from above. Hello? Is someone down there? Should I wake up, Papa? No, maybe I was imagining it. A light from a lantern can be seen coming from the upstairs in the slim form of a beautiful young girl. Al... Aleva. No, it's Aleva. Sorry. Aleva? Alva? Alva. Alva. Descends the staircase at stage right nervously. 
from the light of the lantern, we can see that we are looking at the second floor of a dusty old house with a set of stairs going up and another one going down on the stage right. An unlit stone fireplace sits at stage left. A table, a locked chest, and a wardrobe complete the furnishings. Who's Ministress again? That's you. That's the that's the eleven year old boy. I think. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's the kid. Uh, Alva, what are you doing? I'm just making certain. Like, go back to bed, you little brat. As the girl passes the table, we see a Bosma near him slide gracefully from behind and around her field of sight, carefully avoiding the pool of light. She doesn't appear to see him as she creeps closer to her, his footsteps silent on the hard wooden floor. When he's almost on her, there is a sudden crash from down below. This causes the Bosmer to leap away, hiding again behind the table. Wait, is that, is this Bosmer? Oh, the Bosmer's you. Yeah, that's, that's the thief, yeah. Do some, do some, like, whoo, whoo, whoo noises. Bosmer thief noises! Somehow she doesn't hear that. Stealthy! The girl does not seem to notice the sound, and near him, peeking out from behind the table, watches her. Uh, found anything, sister? No, it's probably just my imagination, but I'm going to go check downstairs. Uh, is there a fire? I'm cold. I didn't bring my blanket. Elva looks towards the long, dead fireplace, and so does Niram. Of course there is. Can't you hear it crackling? I guess so. Elva suddenly jumps as though she heard something which we do not. She turns her attention down the stairs to the first floor. Hello? Alva, lantern ahead of her, begins the descent. She does not seem to notice as the Imperial, Theophan, carrying a big bag of loot and a lantern on his own, calmly walks up right past her. Oh my. Excuse me, young lady, just robbing you. <laughs> Alvia continues her slow, nervous walk downstairs, which, she, which we can now see thanks to her light. She looks around the low ceiling, thoroughly looted room as the action continues upstairs. Theophan's lantern provides the dim light for the second floor. Where you hiding, Niram? I told you, they can't see you and they can't hear you. Even when I'm making these stealthy noises, I can't believe they're all ghosts. They seem so alive. That's what spooks them superstitions, but they ain't gonna hurt us. Just reliving the past, the way the ghosts do. The night they was murdered. Stop thinking about that or you'll get yourself all willy spooked. Got all kinds of stuff down on the first floor. Silver candlesticks, silk, even some gold. What'd you get? I got this empty bag. Sorry, I was just about to start. Get to work on that chest then, it's what you're here for. What do I even not pay you for? What do I even not pay you for? It's like you're not even part of the union. <laughs> oh yeah, you didn't bring me along for my talented noise-making abilities. But uh, yeah, yeah, the equipment. You refilled that lantern before we came here, right? I can't work in the dark. I mean, I can, but I work slowly. Don't worry, Niram, I promise, no surprises. Niam jumps when a young boy ministers appears on the stairs. Hi, how you doing? The lad creeps down quietly and goes to the fire. He acts as if he's stoking it, feeding it wood, poking at the embers. Though there is no wood, no poker, and no fire. We got all the time in the world, friend. No one comes near this house. If they see a lantern light, they'll just assume it's the ghosts. Nero begins picking the lock on a chest of drawers while Theopan opens a wardrobe and begins going through the contents. Ooh, panties! Which are mostly rotten cloth. Ew, gross, rotten panties! <laughs> Nero is distracted, looking at the young boy. Oh, eh, uh, Theophan, how long ago did they die? About well, five years ago. Why are you asking? Well, I'm just making conversation. It's a stupid thing to make conversation about and to be making conversation about anything else, like, you know, gold to sausages of gabagool. <laughs> As they talk, Alvea downstairs, finally having searched the small room, acts as if she's locking the front door. Didn't I already tell you the story? No, you said, I know a place we can boigle when no one's at home, now shut your yap. Except for the ghosts. I thought you was joking. That's a pretty good impression of me, I like that one. No joking, partner. Five years ago, the Cratleys used to live here. Nice people. You seen the daughter Alvea and the boy Ministies. The parents were Sil Silenius and Domini Dominita. Dominic, she was a real dominatrix, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they all got dumb names. Yeah, they got pretty stupid names. We got stupid names, too. <laughs> er yeah, yeah. Niram successfully unlocks the chest and begins rummaging through it. While he does so, Ministes gets up from the fire, apparently warmed up, and stands at the top of the stairs down. Hey! The boy's voice causes Niam, Devin, and Elva all to jump. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, wait. oh wait, I gotta do the girl's voice. Oh my god! <laughs> That's the sound of a young girl being scared, all right! Why aren't you in bed? I'm just going to check the cellar. Okay, I'll wait for you. So, what, what happened? 
Oh, they was ripped to piece. Not pieces, like just one piece. <laughs> Halfway eaten. No one ever knew who or what did it neither. There were these rumors. Elvia opens the door to the cellar and goes in. The light disappears from the first floor. Ministies patiently waits at the top of the stairs, humming a little song to himself. So are these kids just kind of hanging out in the same house? I guess. Unperturbed by the robbers? Well, it's because they're ghosts. The kids are ghosts. Oh! That's why, that's, yeah. I thought, I thought the thieves thought they were ghosts, but they were just kind of hanging out with each other. No, 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 no. The, the, the kids are ghosts. That the would kids be a, are ghosts. That would be a pretty funny premise, though, if the kids thought the thieves were ghosts and the thieves thought the kids were ghosts, they just ignored each other the whole time. That seems like a really bad 90s movie. But I get it. The kids are dead. These yeah. are ghost children. Yes, they're ghost children. I understand now. Now you're the thief. What kind of rumors? Theophan, having exhausted the possibilities in the wardrobe, helps Neam sort through the gold in the chest. Pretty good all, huh? All the rumors. Well, they says old lady Dominita was a witch before she married Silenius. Gave it all up for him to be a good wife and mother. The witches didn't take too kindly to it. They found her and sent some kind of creature here late at night. Something horrible, right out of a nightmare. Oh, like a bear? Like worse than a bear. A bear with two heads and its breath smells really bad. Elva! Elva, what's taking you so long? Dear gods, are we going to watch them get killed right in front of us? Because I'd be down for that, actually. Elva! Uh, Selenius off step. Oh, Selenius is the old man. What's happening down there? Stop playing around, boy, and go to sleep! Okay, Papa! I'm placating him. I'm not no, actually no, going to sleep. No, you're scared. You're scared. Oh, Papa! Oh, you scared me! Ministies, frightened, runs to the stairs up. Along the way, he bumps into Niram, who falls down. The boy does not seem to notice, but continues on up the dark third floor sleeping porch off stage. Eh, out of my way! Oh, and then the Niram's like, oh, watch it, kid, watch it! Hey, uh, you all right? Niram jumps to his feet, white-faced. Never mind that, he touched me! How can a ghost touch me? Well, yeah, of course they can. Some, anyhow. You're the ancestor spirits, god and tombs, and the ghost of the king they had in Daggerfall. If they don't touch you, what good are they? Why are you so surprised? Ah, you thought he'd move right through you, I figure. Yeah, I did expect that. Selenius, the man of the house, comes down the stairs cautiously. Dominita, off stage. Don't leave us alone, Selenus. We're coming with you. Wait, it's dark. Let me get some light. Selenus goes to the cold fireplace, sticks his hand forward, and suddenly in his arm there's a lit, burning torch. Niam scrambles back, horrified. I felt that! I felt the heat of the ghost fire! Come on down, it's all right. Ministers leads his mother, Dominita, Dominita, down the stairs where they join Selenius. I don't know why you're so scared, Niam. I must say I'm disappointed. I didn't figure you for a superstitionalist. Theophan goes for the stairs up. Uh, where are you going? One more floor to search. Oh, uh, can't we just go? We got so much loot already. So many rotten panties. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I don't want... What would I want those? I mean, those are, okay, actually, you know, those are some nice lace panties. Okay, never mind. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Oh my god, is that on the wire? <laughs> Niram watches as the family of three, following Selenius and his torch, walk down towards the first floor. Alva! Alva, say something! There, you see? If you don't like ghosts, third floor is the place to be. All four of them are downstairs now. I can't argue with that logic. Theophan goes upstairs, off stage, but Niram stands at the top of the stairs, looking down at the family. The three look around the first floor as Alvea did, finally turning towards the cellar door. All four. Selenius opens the cellar door. Helva, what are you doing down in the cellar, girl? You see her? Do you see her? All four, Theophan? I think so. I see someone. Hello? What if there's five ghosts, Theophan? Selenius thrusts his torch in through the cellar door, and it is suddenly extinguished. The first floor falls into darkness. Mistress Dominita and Selenius scream, but ah. we cannot see what is happening to them. Ah, we're screaming. Ah. 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 <laughs> oh my god, I'm already dead, though. <laughs> Near him is nearly hysterical, screaming along with them. Ah. The infant runs downstairs to the third floor. What is it? What if there's five ghosts? The man, the wife, the girl, the boy, and what killed them? And what killed them? That's what I said! What if it's a ghost that can touch us too, just like the others? From the darkened first floor, there's a creak of the door opening, although we cannot see it. And then there was a heavy clawed footfall, one step at a time, coming towards the stairs. No. Don't get so upset. They can touch us. 
What make you think it wants to? All the others didn't even notice we was here. The open's lantern dimmed slightly. He adjusted carefully. Only, only what if it ain't a ghost, Theophan? What if it's the same creature and it's still alive? And it ain't no, it, and it ain't, and it ain't, ain't nothing since five years ago. The footsteps begin the slow, heavy stomp up the stairs. Through, though whatever it is, we cannot see it. Nero notices the light beginning to dim from the lantern despite Theophan frantically trying to fix it. I'm sorry, can we go back and do a reread of that one? I, I think ain't eight is def We have to edit the script later. I'll, we'll come back to that later. Uh, you know, I, I, gotta be, I gotta be completely honest here. I'm not really liking with... <clears throat> I'm not really liking with my portrayal of this character. Why does he have a Brooklyn accent? That doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I know, I know, director, I know that you, you, you specifically wrote that down. That, like, Bronx slash Brooklyn accent. I, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. You said you refilled the lamp, but it went out. The light goes out entirely, and the stage is filled with darkness. You promised me you refilled the lamp! Best lamp on the market, he says. Never will run out, he says. You asked for some whale oil, but you know what you got instead? Well, I'll give you a hint. He's a snake oil salesman. More footsteps and a horrible, horrible howl. The men scream. Ah! Howl? <laughs> the curtain falls. I realize that's supposed to be a horror story, but I've got follow-up questions. Can the two... Parties now interact with each other because they're both ghosts. Can the thieves and the family of four have a good time? Oh, together? for just for for the rest of eternity. For the rest of eternity, it's just like, what are you doing in my house? I don't know what I'm doing in your house. How did I even get here? <laughs> Speaking of ghosts, <laughs> let's make sure that Silus hasn't turned into one of them. Yeah. I never thought all I would want is peace and quiet, but I think our little adventure scared me straight. Oh, look, he's actually got all the little pieces in there. That's neat. Yeah. Wait a minute. Where's the mouse ball? It's it wasn't actually a mouse ball. It was chewing gum, and now he's, he likes black licorice. The museum is doing well. I haven't told anyone about the incident with the razor. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Oh! What are you doing that for? <laughs> he's, got a, he's just got a chorus up there. So why are you singing at my skulls? No, the skulls are singing. The museum I'm is doing singing. well. I haven't told anyone. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're well, fine. We did it. Yeah, we'll do it better, and we'll set booby traps since we know Dagon's gonna betray us. Frost rune. We're gonna put the runes in Mayrune's Dagon. Thank you. Please. As long as he doesn't. Man, the game really does not like those frost runes. All right, I won't set booby traps. Okay.